Hi all and today's video is very very important for a long time I was saying that I just want to make a podcast who were cracked like a Google or Fang level companies so today I got a chance to make these kind of videos with the help of a guy who cracked the Google his name is Shubham Padak he was working as a technology specialist in Infosys after 4 years of his experience he moved his his career into data engineering part and now working as a cloud data engineering one of the biggest companies in like google so i just want to uh invite him to this show because he he actually he have a lot of things to share for the entire data community because we don't sum up the items but if we someone who cracked these kind of companies they can give more insight to the entire data community and people are really eager to writing these kind of video so i can invite him to this meeting yeah uh, welcome to, to shubha more thing i just want to get a because people fe fear about the rejection right so what do you say about these kind of rejection anything anything you want to say i think rejections are the base for your success mm -hmm. if you never been rejected in something how will you know ki you will uh, you need to grow in this part right yes so rejections are the baseline for any success so you mm -hmm. cannot find even a single person who is not been rejected ever and they will see if you let down yourself after a rejection that is a negative thing for you if you learn from a rejection then you will definitely success in your life yeah, yeah. this question is coming from the entire data community because uh, getting a call from the fang based companies or product based community is really difficult so how you uh, experience or how you can share to easy this path to our community. I think you already uh, got a call from Google, you cleared it and you're sitting here, right? So if you have any suggestion, uh, give me to the community. Sure, uh, that's a very important question. Uh, and that's a, it's a, sim a simple answer, okay? <laughs> Always keep your resume updated. Always look out for the key skills that a company is requiring, right? So whenever you apply for a company, uh, you cannot update your resume according to every company. But huh, make a cluster of companies that you are applying for and uh, just see what are the common key skills every company is uh, requiring and add those key skills in your resume. Definitely okay. you cannot add all those things that you don't know of. But yeah, uh, the uh, skills that you can learn in the like one, two months or you have the pretty good idea that you know that you can add those skills in your resume and uh, that creates a very good chance of you getting a call right mm -hmm. because every company every day gets a thousands of application right and filtering those applications require a maybe they do wider so software because every like an hr cannot go through every resume right so uh -huh. those key skills better are wrought in your resume so they uh, got up like you got a pretty good chance of getting filtered out by that application right so mm. that is the one thing always keep your resume updated according to the company that you are applying for and the second thing uh, uh, after that like after this always ask for a referral right mm. so whenever you apply for a company look uh, for a person that might be in your connections either it's a linkedin or anybody that you know of uh, I always look seek out for the referrals because okay. uh, if you apply for a company portal that's a different uh, uh, scenario and mm -hmm. if you got referred by someone uh, i might be get you a, like i might say that the 90 percent chance you will get a call oh, right? so yes. that plays a very vital role uh, in this mm -hmm. so that is one two things that you can take a note of and mm -hmm. uh, like thirdly it based purely based on your luck right mm. <laughs> sometimes you apply for a company at the right time when they have the requirement right so yeah sometimes they don't have the requirement but the opening was there in the portal mm. and you didn't get a call so mm. sometimes luck based also but yeah uh, 70 80 percent time you can uh, get the call either from a referral or by a good resume okay so okay yeah yeah. yeah thanks shubham for sharing these three tips okay then we can move on to the next question so this is really important so when when the people are really preparing to the uh, companies like okay service-based companies and product-based companies are 
uh, entirely different right in the we can get a role in the service based company it is easy compared to the product based company but in the product based companies like mang uh, that kind of level we need to have a road map so can you mm-hmm. share the road map how you cracked because this will uh, i got lot of con- uh, request from the linkedin they all were, they already asking me to create a video to share the path how to become a, actually i'm working as an assured data engineer how to become an assured data mm-hmm. engineer because uh, i need some uh, input from you also because you have aware about this one right if you share right. your thoughts it will be definitely helpful for the people sure sure uh so for a road map i can say uh first like there are uh, for a data engineer right there are two three things that like the key skills that they require right first is sql everybody like whichever working on a data should have, must have a good knowledge of sql okay. second thing the programming right uh, either it's a dsa algorithms and all the knowledge of the all the algorithms how they work or some programming skills like uh, some medium level skills are okay you don't have to go in deep dive and uh, you have to have the whole <laughs> higher level of knowledge medium level it's okay and the third thing uh, all the uh, all the funk like all the architecture level of hadoop spark and if you have a knowledge of cloud that would be a plus point for you so these are some three things that you have to have when you are working as a data engineer so for okay. a fresher role uh, system design database design not plays that much of a part but mm-hmm. if you are experience of 2 3 years maybe uh, you must have a basic understanding of your system designs database mm. designs and warehouse designs and all those things right okay. uh, if you are a much higher level like maybe a 6 or 7 years of experience yeah you should have a in depth knowledge of these things because <laughs> after 6 7 years maybe your programming skills is okay that is okay for a company but yeah your system design database design warehouse design these skills have to be more refined mm-hmm. after much years right mm-hmm. so okay. these are the things that you can focus on when you are working on uh, like preparing for a data engineer and if you are uh, maybe switching a role from a system like uh, maybe a sde to a this thing our data engineer thing data engineer. so you can also yeah you can also look out for these things start learning from uh, some open source tools right o- sorry open source website like uh, geeks for geeks and maybe google helps a lot right uh, either it's uh, maybe you are looking for big data right so you can start watching some videos on youtube okay what is data engineering and first you get to know whether it interests you or not Mm. okay directly starting preparing is it's uh, not the right thing you first <laughs> yeah. have to understand what it is right if it's right for you mm. then you can ha huh, uh, start with some open source things and maybe you can take up a, a course somewhere which requires like which requires 5 or 6 months of your time and mm. you can switch the company so mm. for me i have do did a first internal switch in my own company took a project mm-hmm. learn the whole thing for maybe uh, one and a half or two years and then i switched to a product based company right mm. because uh, having a experience uh, in the technology is a really must thing because mm. many you can switch into a service based com- <clears throat> sorry you can switch to a service based company just by reading a thing like for five or six months and doing some pocs and all you can search like move into a service based company but for a product based company they directly know you don't mm. have the skills right yes so you must have to have worked on that technology you must to have the in depth knowledge of, of the technology and the whole architecture view also mm. so yet yeah, they they took like five or six nouns just just to judge you on every aspects right either mm. it's a uh, architectural design the coding part the sql part everything they do mm. right mm-hmm. okay. so i would say if you are applying if you are not a fresher and you are applying for uh, after 4 or 5 years so you must have a product no- oh, this uh, working knowledge of a project mm. then only apply for a, uh, a company or seek out for opportunity there okay. that will help you a lot right yes. just by reading it yeah just by reading it and working on it that's a total different story mm, yes yes so, yes shubham
exactly so uh, one more question because people are asking because how many rounds when you cracked in the google or you you attempted a lot of interviews right before you joined mm-hmm. in the google so normally yeah. uh, how how many rounds they will set in a product based company how many rounds they want to filter the employees mm-hmm. so minimum i would say every product based company has around four or five rounds mm-hmm. right so few are technical one or two are managerial and they depends on uh, like they judge you on your behavioral skills as well so every aspect of you is judged on all that interviews right so for mm-hmm. me i initially had a uh, that screening round so for i am spe- like uh, talking about specifically in google mm-hmm. so for me i initially had a clear, uh, that uh, uh, screening round that a hr comes and they will ask you some uh, rapid fire questions uh okay. either it's on searching algorithms and some basic algorithms that they will give you a code they will ask you okay what algorithm is it and what is the time complexity of this and space complexity of it and all those things right they will ask you rapid fire questions mm-hmm. and if they see okay you are a good person and you are uh, like you have the educate knowledge of moving ahead they will uh, give you heads up and start preparing your uh, I'll start preparing you for the further interviews Mm-hmm. so after that on site interviews comes right so on site interviews before covid they are all we have to go to the office and give all the on site interviews in one day mm-hmm. but now at it's virtual then yeah so we can give it in on google meet or something like that yes. so uh, after 15 days we i had a preparation call where they will uh, give you idea about how the rounds are conducted they will also give you the study material for that oh. uh, yeah so after that uh, you will have your on site round for me the first round was after the screening the second round was the big data and all those things so they okay. will judge me on the big data technology how uh, how much i know about the architectural part of the big data like mm-hmm. hadoop spark and all those things mm-hmm. and they will also have a database design round in the same um, same round they will also mm-hmm. have the database design database design questions in the same round right okay and uh, the third one was the system design round for me mm. so data the pipeline design, design or system design yeah 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 right so system okay. design they will ask like some coach for uh, like they will ask you to design maybe a real time data ingestion pipeline uh, how the how the architecture that you design they will also okay. ask you okay uh, like why what are the problems that you can face while designing this architecture so mm-hmm. you cannot just study one architecture and just give the okay ha i can use this as this thing but you have to have a in depth knowledge of all the whole architecture process ki okay if mm-hmm. this problem occurs i can replace this with this and this will solve the issue okay mm-hmm. and they will also ask you okay uh, like if my database is getting slow right because more number of requests are coming or something so scale up scale down something all those things that they will cover in that round mm-hmm. okay after that the fourth round for me was the coding round where they took a half an hour for one coding question that is probably okay. based on dsa and the second half the half uh, the second half an hour they took uh, the this thing like on big data right they uh, wanted to write me a spark code to ingest the data and uh, divide it into chunks and all those things mm-hmm. so the coding round was that and after that the fifth round for me was the hiring manager round where they check for the googliness right mm-hmm. so uh, for google they say googliness and uh, that's more of kind of a behavioral round like mm-hmm. they will judge you on how you deal with your clients how you deal with your teammates how you deal with your whole entire community there right okay. so they focus very much on that mm-hmm. i think every company have a behavioral round like this and uh, Uh, at least the product based company of the go, uh, good level right they will have a behavior round and they will judge you if you don't perform well in that that's a way that's a deal breaker for you <laughs> so that's the main thing and okay. after that after the whole five rounds uh, the whole your the review of all the five rounds will be sent to your uh, there is a committee right, called hiring committee okay mm-hmm. uh, they consist of four or five people and you don't know that you don't mm-hmm. have the like anything idea about that the whole f- feedback of the your interviews will be sent to those people and they will uh, decide whether you will be hired or not based oh. on the five interview okay so okay. that doesn't yeah so the hiring process doesn't stop after the fifth round 
that went ahead and they will that hiring committee will decide whether you will be hired or not okay okay so, actually which round is really difficult you feel uh uh for if i would say the system design round is really difficult for me because okay. i only had around uh, 1.5 or 2 years of experience in data engineering background mm -hmm. and i don't have that adequate knowledge of all the services that are offered there and what i can use so that was a difficult round for me uh, it took a lot for me to study for that also because okay. i have to cover for everything like batch ingestion data streaming or any vast variety of uh, combinations I, uh, that they can uh, ask me so that oh, was okay. a really good round for me, yes mm -hmm. i think uh, this almost 5 to 6 rounds right for to crack these yeah. kind of interviews definitely mm -hmm. so i think coding part uh, is playing because uh, people are saying the python is more easy as compared to c and other languages right uh, because me, uh, almost in the data science field also python has the uh, good no, means has the hands on so i think uh, python is the first round then the sql right sql is placing is very important role then uh, data engineering part like uh, big data part then the cloud also uh, is azure or aws gcp yeah there yeah then behavior yeah. round right yeah right so oh. yeah these are yeah these are the skills that you need mm -hmm. yeah see for this cloud is not that important ki you have the knowledge of cloud then only you can crack this uh -huh. if you are working on the native systems or like hadoop uh, spark and all those things uh, you are directly spinning the hadoop plus in your uh, in your own native systems that also mm -hmm. fine the architecture is same you are using the whole just when i gave the interview i took the liberty uh, to give the interview on the cloud basis i gave the answers using the cloud uh, uh, analogy that i know of uh, but it's not required that much mm -hmm. so anyways any cloud like if you are working on azure if you are working on gcp or uh, aws it, um, the cloud yeah. the architecture doesn't depend on cloud the services mm -hmm. might change the services might uh, name might change but every cloud has the similar services mm -hmm. similar okay. offering so, oh. yeah that's totally okay yeah definitely mm -hmm. so yeah, i think uh, it is really helpful for the uh, people who are really doubted in their start their career because i think 2020 uh, the people are really eager to watch in the data scientist profile but in the mm -hmm. 2020 to it is Ch something changed and they are making more interested to data engineering part so i think right, right. this video will definitely helpful for them and um, one more question uh, because any resources it will you can suggest it to the audience because people are really as a pressure of if they are experience or they are working four to five years in the software industry they want to migrate into the important they already know the importance of data so they want to migrate into data engineering if any resources you can suggest them to uh, learn see uh, for me myself uh, i would say uh i have never uh, bought anything uh, <laughs> bought, never bought any course there are a lot of things available on youtube google everything like there yes, are education exactly. now every free right mm. education is totally free now so if you are eager right so you can find everything over youtube or google right mm. just there is a path that you have to follow you cannot directly <laughs> learn system design like at the end of system design and start, like leave the basics apart right so mm -hmm. for the basics you have to start with sql first and maybe if you don't have the knowledge of python java is also fine that's if you have no knowledge of either of one language that's totally okay okay uh, so you have to make your basic strong first then you can move ahead and learn about hadoop spark acha what is big data is then mm -hmm. what is data engineering is so first learn about these things what you are looking for if you are going to a data engineering thing first learn about what is data engineering Mm -hmm. then you can move ahead and uh, look for any other path right so whenever you go to a paid course also right you can see the content of the course right what mm -hmm. they will teach you mm -hmm. just check the headlines and start searching on google okay one by one so that mm -hmm. will also help a lot so everything yeah. is available on youtube google right mm -hmm. so you can learn everything there you can <laughs> you have geeks for weeks right every course yeah. is available there Mm -hmm. uh you can if you want to uh, do the practice of the programming right go on lead codes directly mm -hmm. you can pr practice everything there 
So I think now there are a lot of courses are coming lot for the courses, data. Yeah. Ah, yeah, because the demand of data engineering is high. Data engineers high. are high. Yeah, right, that is right. the reason. Because uh, when I checked on my messages in the LinkedIn, because they are maybe some p- persons are in the data analyst or uh, software because they are stuck. They are self doubted if the correct path I am following or not. So that was the reason mm-hmm. people are just uh, need some mentoring. not paid a course right. just mentoring to uh, reach their dream companies or the uh, change their career path because they want how, how what kind of project they need some kind of instruction right i think you give some answer for the question uh, it will definitely helpful for them because they can move on the first python then sql they can follow then you can uh, one cloud thing is definitely helpful add on one then the big data to process the data pipeline and the deploying part we can use the azure devops or i think kubernet uh, docker or anything we can use mm-hmm. and yeah. pipeline design that also uh, more add, add on more right for the higher yeah. level of for example a, a 7 year of experience they definitely need to architecture level right then mm-hmm. behavior level is really uh, tricky <laughs> that round right yeah. uh, okay so i think uh, yeah. you give some of the answers of me and i want to uh, uh, check one more question because the career growth of this uh, data so how you think about the because uh, software from the software career growth how it impact because demanding right it is very re- demanding yeah. right now right so i would say every year the data is multiplying like a, a bullet train right the, yes. everything you see around you with data right so i would say in the upcoming years maybe not very far ahead like uh, maybe in 4 or 5 years you will start seeing more and more job opening for this role mm-hmm. okay because every company is now moving towards the data they know the data is very important for them and now they have uh, learned from many big companies which are taking advantage of data right? uh, yes so even a small startup is now taking the data very seriously and they are more recruiting the uh, engineers w- w- who are from the data background and uh, i would say up- in the upcoming years the job of the data engineer or any data related profile would mm. keep on increasing mm. and uh, i would say even the pay will get better by the yes, by the yes, year exactly right? yeah by right. the year it will be better so i think freshers yeah. also, also they are doubted themselves it is a good thing because you can also move on the data engineering part when you come out from the uh, uh, campus right so it will be definitely right. good i think next 10 to 20 years the data will play a vital role 
definitely it's now <laughs> now also it's playing the more vital role but yeah people are not realizing that so but uh, yeah with time some like uh, the good companies already already realized that a few years ago yes. now even the small companies are getting uh, their hands in the data field mm. so every small company is now very eager to move towards data and yeah. now every small company is moving towards the cloud also mm. cloud so migration is very important yeah. yeah right yeah. so i would say even a cloud a knowledge of cloud is very plus point for you because there are mm. more job openings in the cloud field right mm. now everybody yeah. is looking for a person who is well versed in data data engineering as well and they mm. also have a knowledge of cloud every cloud. job opening you now see is now cloud centric so <laughs> yes yes it's yes. when i saw the job opening also there are always act, act, asking to the cloud is a gcp or azure aws etc right yes. so that is also very yes. important yeah yes. and uh, we are moving to our final part so the people are really eager to know about the pay chain because you are uh, work you were you was working in a service based company and after that you uh, move into the product based company so how much because normally service based companies packages people know and uh, when you mm. mic when you move on the google uh, how it impact your uh, career so that you can uh, can you explain sure sure uh, so whenever you are working in a service based company you pay is dependent on your company right yes. uh, like whenever you get a promotion whenever you get anything right this but for a product based company even from the start you will get a good pay uh, 